Hi, Tile from Inner Fidelity here. Today we're going to talk about the Hi-Fi Man series of planar magnetic headphones, the HE5, HE5LE, HE6, and HE500 headphones. The HE5 was introduced at the 2009 Rocky Mountain Audio Fest in Colorado. Uh, this was um, quite a splash at the time. Uh, there, there are other headphones of this type, um, but they're quite obscure and, uh, and mainly out of production. Um, so this was sort of a resurgence of an old technology. Uh, it made quite a splash at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. A lot of people listened to it and felt that it had great promise at the time, as did I. Um, but uh, it also had some failings. I think uh, the highs are too zippy. And um, the the bass is great. Um, the bass is really really good on planar magnetic headphones in general. Uh, the mid range, however, was somewhat withdrawn on these headphones, and I felt them a little uh, lacking in uh, body and um, warmth. Uh, um, but they certainly showed promise at the time. Uh, the problems that these headphones had, beside the brightness, was uh, they're a wood construction, and you can see here that the wood housings started to crack uh, occasionally on people. And uh, so Hi-Fi Man uh, in 2010 produced the HE5LE as the replacement for the HE5. Um, this now has a synthetic body on it, and the highs were tamed somewhat. Uh, I thought they were very good sounding at the time. I was really appreciative of the direction that Hi-Fi Man was going in developing these headphones and developing the sound of these headphones. So this was a good headphone, uh, except it still had a bit of a, uh, a lack of uh, body in the mid-range. Um, then the HE6 came along. Um, this headphone was a definite improvement again. Uh, has a much more balanced sound, or significantly more balanced sound, than the HE5LE. Uh, unfortunately, it was uh, uh, took, takes a lot of voltage to drive. Uh, planar magnetic headphones are not difficult to drive because they're almost purely resistive, so the amp doesn't see any of the reactive load uh, that it would see in a normal dynamic headphone. However, because they're so inefficient, they need a uh, an amp that can swing a lot of voltage to drive it. So you really do need a, a full-size uh, an amplifier to drive this headphone. Uh, it, it won't play loud enough out of a portable player at all. Uh, recently, Hi-Fi Man came out with the HE500, uh, their latest iteration of this headphone. The highs were tamed again a little bit, brought into control and the mids were brought out uh, and this headphone I find as a terrifically well balanced headphone the sound is absolutely fabulous I would re recommend it in a heartbeat um, I prefer to listen to this headphone than a Sennheiser HD 800 which sounds a little bit analytical and lacking in weight similar to this headphone um, through the mid-range uh, so I, I really think uh, Hi-Fi Man has, uh, over the course of time, uh, come to produce a world-class headphone. Absolutely a fabulous headphone. The other headphone that's like these headphones is the Odyssey LCD2. I find the LCD2 a little um, slow, not uh, having a withdrawn treble. Uh, I also find that the HE500 is still a little bit too quick, a little bit too bright, so they sort of bracket what I would consider the sweet spot. They're both quite close though, and um, they're both terrific headphones. Um, nonetheless, I would say that Hi-Fi Man has now uh, reached the point where I would consider this a, a world-class headphone, and I would highly, highly recommend it to anybody looking for this type of uh, headphone at home. Uh, Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.